Zioli Harper and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about addiction. First of all, I'm going to start off with telling you a story about something that happened to me when I was younger. I was probably about 21 or 22 and I was in my mom's house in um, White River and I was cooking. Back then I used to live on the White Mountain Apache Reservation and I was curious about addiction and what causes a person to become addicted. There are a lot of people on my reservation and elsewhere that I knew get addicted to alcohol. I knew enough about myself and humanity to know that I was not anything special in such a way that I could drink and drink and drink and not become addicted. I knew that no one knows who's going to become addicted and how soon they're going to become addicted and how much drinking it's going to take for them to become addicted. And uh, no one knows exactly how much, how many beers or wine coolers or whatever you have to drink in order to become addicted. You know, so I told God that I understood that no one knows that we don't as humans know how much it takes for a person to become addicted or when they become addicted. I told him that I see people around the reservation that other people call camels and those are people that drink so much that it shows in their body. Often they have a strawberry nose. Often they, um, it shows up in their skin, in their body. You can tell that they spend all their time drinking. And I was telling him that I know that uh, most people think that those people are addicted because they drink all the time and then there are also other people that are addicted that are maybe not quite as far along as that but it really has destroyed their lives and their relationships and things like that and I told him that I didn't know obviously where uh, how addiction happens but I told him that I didn't want to become addicted to alcohol and, you know, by that I meant I didn't want to become addicted to anything, but I specifically told God that I didn't want to become addicted to it. And could he please bless me that I wouldn't become addicted to it? Now, I told him also that I didn't know exactly what that meant for me, but I, I know that I didn't want to become an alcohol addict. And I asked him to please bless me that I won't become one. Now I know obviously if you don't drink, you're not going to become addicted to alcohol. I mean, if you don't drink alcoholic beverages, you're not going to become addicted. And that just makes sense. And at that time I was living in um, a culture and by culture, I don't mean, you know, English, Spanish or Scottish or something like that. You know, I mean, uh, a, a group of people where a certain type of behavior is considered a normal part of society. And over there on the reservation where I was living at that time, and in many um, cultures here in the United States, it's considered a normal way of life. You know, people go to the bar, they go drinking, they go to a friend's house to go to a party. You know, a lot of people think it's normal. Um, and so I was in that type of um situation at that time where I thought that it was just a normal part of growing up. And I used to go out drinking with my friends, probably on the weekend, you know, sometimes during the weekday. And um, it felt excessive to me. And I just asked God that and then I didn't think about it again after that. Anyway, so the next day, um, some of my friends asked me if I wanted to go out drinking. And so I said, okay, you know, I'd completely forgotten about that prayer that I'd said. And I um, went out drinking with them. And I remember that I had about three drinks. I think maybe, I can't remember if it was beer or two or three drinks throughout the evening. And I can't remember if it was beer or, you know, wine coolers or something like that. 
but I just remember that I felt really, really dehydrated. I didn't really feel good and I didn't enjoy it very much. And the next day I was so unbelievably sick. I just couldn't, I, I'd never been that sick before. And I was sick to the point that it scared me really, really, really bad. It, um, I felt horrible. I felt like I was going to die. I didn't know that a person could be alive and be in that much pain. It was really, really awful. And, um, I knew at that time what a hangover was and this was way 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 worse than a hangover and I, I I know that I've heard since then that some people get really really bad hangovers but um, I I never experienced anything like that and it was enough to scare me to the point that I was pretty cautious the next time I drank and um, after that, I never could drink alcohol without getting sick. And I, I couldn't ever drink it without getting dehydrated. And afterward, I never um, could drink it without getting really, really, really sick like that. So, needless to say, almost, um, I just kind of, the drinking just kind of fell off after that. You know, I wasn't really interested in it. I it didn't have any appeal for me. I wasn't getting what I wanted out of it anyway. You know, my, my life wasn't getting magically better from drinking or anything like that. And it just kind of fell off. And, you know, later on, I met the missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And that's where I go to church now. And eventually I wanted to get baptized. And they talked to me about the word of wisdom, which um, a, a portion of it is abstaining from drinking alcoholic beverages. And I didn't have any problem telling them at that time that that I would be willing to abstain from doing that because, you know, I had I had um, already traveled that road for myself with this conversation that I had with God and and everything that happened with it. And you know, when I look back on it, I think to myself, you know, that I asked God for this. I asked Him if He could stop me become from becoming addicted. And I know that what happened afterward was a direct answer to my prayer because it was so uncomfortable that I just didn't want to drink anymore. And um, and it kept me from becoming an alcoholic. And um, anyway, I don't know that you know I would have become an alcoholic, but God knows a lot more than me. And I think that part of what we have to do when we have... Um, um, problems with things and things like that or we have questions uh, about things that the first step maybe um, in putting something behind us is giving our will over to God you know and that's where we ask God that his will be done in it all and accept what he's given to us and so that's the story that I wanted to share with you about what happened to me when I was young and I know that most of you that know me know that I don't drink. I The last time I had um, any alcohol to drink was probably sometime in my mid-20s. And, um, and I'm 44 now, so that gives you an idea of how long that I just have absolutely no desire or inclination to drink any alcohol at all. And then what's more is that with me being LDS, I don't live in a culture where um, people drink. Most people don't drink and people have a lot of fun. I mean, I wouldn't be LDS if it wasn't fun, but uh, you know, there's a lot that goes to, to it or with it, not just it being fun. But the thing is, is that, you know, you don't have to, to drink to have fun. You don't have to drink alcohol to enjoy your life. There's so many wonderful great things out there that you can do every day and you can be completely happy and um, when I first became LDS and I first started hanging out with the young people that were my own age we did so many things and we had so much fun we'd go hiking we go to dances we'd go swimming you know and um, people were always putting together fun things to do 
and you know we just didn't kind of leave it to chance that something fun was going to happen uh, there was always somebody organizing something fun to do you know and not necessarily organizing it like as like in a relief society um, effort or something like that but just like somebody saying hey let's go rappelling I know this cliff where we can go and someone has the equipment and let's all go and everyone would show up there and we'd get to do a lot of fun things like that. Anyway, so um, I remember the time when I drank as a dark time, a dark period in my life and um, the time after that, it was a lot nicer, it was a lot better and uh, it, was, it was so much more enjoyable, so much more fun. Anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you and I'll be doing some more videos about addiction, um, kind of breaking it down for you, um, you know, uh, chemically what happens in your brain, the different parts of the brain and how it happens, um, what you can do to help yourself if you're in the situation where you feel like, you know, you've kind of lost control of your ability to stop yourself or where Maybe you haven't even thought about that part yet. Maybe you're just noticing that people are telling you a lot that you've got a problem that you need to quit or it's causing um, problems in your relationships with others, whether it's your uh, family or friends or like a spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend. You know, you kind of notice the signs when um, problems are starting to happen because of it. So anyway, I'll be giving you more information about that. So um, keep a lookout for my next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that story helped. You know, um, just remember you can you can ask God about anything, and you can ask Him for help with anything. And if you are worried that something might get in tr get you in trouble, just ask Him. Uh, please bless me that I won't get in trouble, and He'll help you find a solution before it ever gets to the point where you're so bad off that you're hurt and you're having a trouble having trouble finding your way out. And even if you are at that point where you are having trouble finding your way out of a bad situation, whether it's addiction or something else, you know, even if you've made some bad choices already, just ask him for help. And the first step is giving your will over to him um, and letting him help you. And if you do that, he will help. I promise you that he will. And um, anyway, so that's the end of that. And I hope you all have a good day. And I hope you found, found something helpful in what I said and what I shared with you today.